Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my January 2022 show and tell. How is it already the end of January? I'm going to start with memories because there's a big one in there that is going to set some framework for a couple disclaimers about this video. So in January, uh, both Peggy and I in tandem uh, appear to have gotten Omicron, uh, the current strain of COVID-19. We don't know for sure because we weren't able to get tested, uh, but that is because in our area, if you have really mild symptoms, they recommend that you don't get tested and therefore you can't get an appointment. <laughs> so there's that. You have to, if you have more severe symptoms, you can, but we both had very, very mild cases. We're totally fine. I do have one lingering thing, which is this like shortness of breath. So this is actually my first time sitting down to film a video since that started. If you catch me or see me catching my breath or uh, if I sound out of breath, that is why it is not because I talk fast. Trust me, I have been talking fast my entire life. <laughs> that is nothing new, um, but it doesn't usually leave me out of breath. So we'll see how I do. I may need to stop and start. These are usually a longer video, so it's a doozy to start with, but I also have lots of things I wanna show, including a massive tower of books. So, so the COVID thing was really a defining thing for January because Peggy had it and then I had it and we were each basically out of commission for a week, not because we were feeling really, really ill for a week each, but because uh, you do need to self-isolate. So you, you're kind of down, like you're not going anywhere, you're not doing anything. Um, we're, we were both really, really tired. So that was a thing. Hi, hi Sheila. <laughs> um, so that was a thing. And just in general, we did really, really well. We both had sore throats. We were both tired. Um, we were both headachy. <clears throat> um, I had a couple of extra symptoms, yay. But in general, our stuff lined up. So. We're pretty convinced that's, especially with the shortness of breath, pretty convinced that's what it was, but again, no test. I'll just say that um, we feel really blessed that this is the version, if we were gonna catch one, that this is the version we got, and that neither one of us got seriously uh, ill. So that's always something to be super thankful and grateful for, but it was a really defining part of our January, so I definitely wanted to mention it, not to start off on a bummed out note, but like, it is a thing, it's a thing I'm still dealing with a little bit, so just wanted to throw that out there. But we are fine, we are doing good, sleeping well, like <clears throat> not really coughing a lot, a little bit like of a lingering throat stuff, but very mild, you know, this stuff. And keep in mind, I'm filming this several days before it goes up on the channel. So by the time this actually goes up, I'll probably be doing even better. <laughs> but anyways, so that's that. And Peggy's doing really good. It just, yeah, we were just like kind of lump, lumps. We were basically lumps for the last two weeks of January. So not as productive as we normally are, which is a weird thing. And not being at work when you feel mostly okay is also weird for me anyways. Um, yeah, it just feels weird. I've been socialized my whole life to be like, you're sick, you go to work unless you really, really can't work. And with this, because you don't want to spread it, you have to stay home for a certain amount of time to make sure you're not bringing it to others. And that was just a weird, that was a weird thing <laughs> that I, I don't think I expected to be weird. I thought I would be like, as long as I wasn't really ill, I figured to be like, yay, I don't have to go to work. But instead it was like, this feels weird. And so if you are dealing with this or if you know somebody who's been dealing with it, just know that that's, that I think that's really normal. I think a lot of us struggle with that kind of stuff. So yeah. I'm trying to think of what other memories I have to share from January. Um, other than I groomed my dog, Shayla got a grooming. I just did that the other day. Yesterday? Yesterday. At the time I'm filming this, I did it. And she looks really cute. She's currently fluffing herself all over the place at the moment. You can probably hear her shaking. <laughs> uh, but she looks really cute. I'm getting better at it, so that's something. And uh, other things would be, oh yeah, we started the Unicorn Fam book club. We are, actually I have it here. We're going through the sigil witchery. So book club started in January for members of the unicorn fam and I, I'm really enjoying it. It's super fun to actually have like a motivating, like a reason to read, especially nonfiction. I feel like I really tend to drag my feet. I clearly did very well with fiction <laughs> this month, but nonfiction, sometimes it's a bit of a struggle. And this is a book that I've had for well over a year. Finally, finally got around to working with it. I'm not through it, so I don't want to review it yet, but um, watch for that to come up in my February show and tell, because I'll be completely done with it now, but you can tell my bookmark's still in there. So, but it was really fun to start that. And we've been having some cool discussions and people are sharing their sigils in the Unicorn Fam group. And it's just been really cool. So that is something that was was fun and came about entirely because somebody mentioned it in the membership, one of our chats or something, and we started that. So that was a really fun memory for January and probably <clears throat> one of the highlights of, of the month for me um, was having that start. So 
Yay! Other things, uh, I think that's it for memories. Let's talk YouTube stuff. So I have a couple of channels that I discovered and watched a lot of in January, uh, and not at all tarot related. So hold on to your hold on to your seat for a second. And also, um, I did really really enjoy one tarot related YouTube video. <laughs> there was more than that, but this is the one I wrote down. Uh, Rebecca Getchell did her full tarot collection. And it was super fun to watch. One of the funny funny charming things about it was as I was watching, every once in a while she'd go across a card that had a unicorn in it, and she'd be like, look 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 Lisa. You unicorn and it just charmed the pants off me so that was a super fun watch I'll have it linked down below check it out Rebecca's channel is really fun she's very like authentic and just puts herself all out there and that was fun to watch and other than that I've pretty much I pretty much watched a lot of Enneagram videos like a lot of Enneagram videos as some of you guys know I went down the Enneagram rabbit hole uh this came up in the social hangout chat that we had with Peggy the week that she was ill because she was like I need to socialize <laughs> like I need contact with people so we did a social live stream um the week that she was ill and then I'm gonna just itch my nose while I'm talking to you I'm sorry I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself grace and just be super casual on this one other than the fact that I did makeup which just felt fun to do so I did that but it made me feel human anyways I'm babbling what was I saying oh yes Enneagram things so <clears throat> I kind of went down the Enneagram rabbit hole and in that same sort of bucket of Enneagram stuff was discovering a couple of channels that I really, really enjoyed watching their videos all about uh, various Enneagram types. So there's two channels and one sort of set of videos I want to recommend if you're curious about the Enneagram. These two are really fun to watch and I felt like have been really helpful to me. Um, the first channel is uh, Abby Howe and I will have her whole channel linked down below. She does all Enneagram stuff and it's all very like they're all like skit type things that kind of highlight the quirks of each particular Enneagram type. I would recommend that channel if you're curious, if you already know your Enneagram type and you just wanna watch videos that are kind of just for fun, kind of like if you've ever seen like an astrology meme, like Instagram account, it's kind of like that, videos, Enneagram. <laughs> like like here's what annoying things type nines do or here's, um, here's, uh, I don't know, like they're all skits and she performs them all and they're really fun to watch. So it's very lighthearted, fun Enneagram content. But there's another channel I've been really enjoying watching and that is Hilary McCaskey. I hope I wrote that down right, <laughs> Hilary McCaskey. Um, and her channel is a little more serious. She still does a lot of the same kind of lighthearted content, but she also does more serious stuff. She does a lot of things where she compares like common mistypes. Um, and by the way, let me pause, let me pause. If you have no idea what I'm talking about. Enneagram is a kind of like a personality typing system, but it's a lot deeper than that. And uh, it basically can help you identify where some of your core strengths and core weaknesses are. And then you can kind of work. It's a really cool personal growth tool that I'm really enjoying learning about, uh, but I've always loved that kind of stuff. It's very much not a fixed thing where like you're just this type and that's who you are forever. It's more like, here's what people who have had similar upbringings to you or who have uh, been treated similarly as children, for example, how they manifest their personality in their adult life, sometimes relying on maybe unhealthy coping mechanisms and things like that. And here's how you can move kind of towards growth. Here's how you can step into more uh, alignment or self-knowledge. So it's, I find it really like profoundly healing and like empowering instead of disempowering where some personality typing sort of systems can feel like this is just who you are that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it feels like it's a system and I love systems. So it's definitely speaking my speak right now. So Abby Howe for fun, lighthearted Enneagram content and Hilary McCaskey. Um, she does, she, there's a lot of overlap between Enneagram stuff and Christianity. So know that going in, you will probably find there's a lot of overlap in the content you might find on YouTube about the Enneagram. I think it's just that Enneagram has a great appeal to people wanting to explore spirituality. I don't think that's exclusive to Christianity. I think it just happens to be that there's a lot of that. So there's a lot of that overlap. If that's something that may trigger you, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Hillary, for example, will every once in a while reference God in her videos. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I love her content. She also self-identifies as a type nine, which is the type I am self-identified as at the moment. Uh, unless something changes, it seems to be hitting very true. Um, so I like watching her channel because she comes at this content from the perspective of somebody with, I believe, a similar type to me. So it's enjoyable for me to watch her content. And <clears throat> if you're really, really interested in trying to figure out your type, if you think you have it narrowed down, there's some online tests and things like that you can take. I don't want to recommend any because I don't really know which ones are good. I'll just say Google Enneagram personality test or whatever Enneagram test. Look for a free one. Maybe take three or four of them. They're apparently very often inaccurate. 
So what's more important, I think, is once you take one, read about your read about the types that it looks like you might be or that you could be and see which ones start to start to hit. And I did a lot of that before I really narrowed it down. So just a recommendation on that point. But if you have a general idea of what type you might be, then I really recommend these videos. They're really long, but they're panels. They're with Beatrice Chestnut. She's a really, really uh, well um, versed in the Enneagram system. She comes from a psychotherapy background and she hosted these panels on a channel called New School Commonweal. Common Wheel? Um, but if you just look up Beatrice Chestnut Enneagram panel and look for the type, the number type you think you are. I watched panels on most of the types and they were really, really interesting to watch because they were basically a group of people who all self-identify as that type, kind of sharing their experiences being that type and the kinds of things that they maybe struggle with or are working on. And that more than anything else, watching those panels helped me really narrow down which type I was. Some of the other things I watched were a little more, uh, I don't want to say inconsistent, but they were more nebulous. Like it was harder to kind of grab onto and go like, oh yeah, that's me. But with the panels, it was way easier. So definitely recommend watching those if you're at all interested in Enneagram stuff. Um, you're probably going to be hearing more from me on this topic as we go forward because I'm really interested in it, but we'll see if it's a temporary thing or like a more long-term <clears throat> interest. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. And I'm not going to edit out, I don't think, all the throat clearing, so I apologize <laughs> in advance. But this is the most talking I've done in, in a while. So let's talk about magic as a category. So there's only really one, I would say kind of magical thing that I would, was doing a lot in January that I wanna talk about. And that is working with my um, Charmcast Tarot. Um, so let me, let me get things out of my way here. So I have my Charmcast Tarot in this Peggy bag that she made for me a long time ago. It's really pretty, <clears throat> it has a unicorn in these, hello, can we focus? There we go. It's got a unicorn in this gorgeous field of flowers. I love this bag so much. And it's like the tiles only come to like here. So there's lots of room for rummaging around in there. Um, but what I've been doing is a daily intention setting practice, which I talked about a little bit in something. Oh, I talked about this when I did my, oh, 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 wait, wait, this is a YouTube favorite. I can have a favorite of my own things. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I wanna talk about this. So in January, I launched the first video in a new series I'm having here on the channel that I am so incredibly stoked about called Let's Read Tarot Together. But basically the premise of this series, it was a it was a springboard from my Tarot with Training Wheels beginner tarot series and my Tarot Bootcamp for Beginners course that I have on my website. Both of those things kind of really got me into wanting to share more learning style, teaching style content here on the channel. And this series came about, the Let's Read Tarot Together came about because I was doing these live Q&A sessions during when I first initially launched Tarot with Training Wheels and there was a lot of questions about comparing different cards and all that kind of thing. And that's something else I started. Okay, wow, I can't focus. So first off, I started a new live series called uh, Troubleshooting the Tarot. That's exactly like our live Q&As we had during the Tarot with Training Wheels uh, free course that's still available on my, on my channel. But we had those live Q and A's and that sparked the idea for troubleshooting the tarot, which is a live stream that I'm gonna have every once in a while so we can kind of get together and talk about our sticking points and learning the tarot. But when I had that, it sort of chain reacted into another idea to get together with you guys on a video and break down a spread, use a different deck each time kind of thing. I'll break down a tarot spread and I'll just take you into my brain as much as I can verbally do. I will bring you into my brain and how I'm getting the interpretations I'm getting of each card in relation to the question, in relation to the position of the spread, and then put the reading together and just do it all the way I would do it in real time, either for myself or for a client, depending on the type of spread we're doing. I will probably actually share with you guys some of the spreads I do use for clients and how I break those down and how I use them. Um, but that will be one thing that I'll do. But I have tons of requests from you guys from the first video, which I will link somewhere in the cards. The first video I did of Let's Read Tarot Together, I used the Modern Witch Tarot. And um, we went through a really basic, my daily conversational tarot spread. It's something I do almost every single day. And broke that down, took you kind of into my brain with me while I did the reading. <clears throat> it was really great, super fun. And then I asked you guys if you had any requests for decks I use in the future, for spreads you want me to do, and I have this big list now. So we're covered, we're good. We have so many ideas and I'm so excited. And some of the requests were really, really great. They were for decks that maybe you don't see in these kinds of videos. Like I got a request to use the Marielle uh, tarot. I got a request to use, um, there was a few like less Rider Waite Smith classic type decks. And so I'm gonna be really excited to do that. Deviant Moon was one of the requests. So I'd really like to do it with that. Um, so we'll just keep an eye out because I really want to, 
I feel like that's the part where we all get stuck, right? You can learn the meanings, but it's like putting it together. So I'm so excited about that series. So that's a YouTube thing. <laughs> I'm gonna move on to magic now. But anyways, in that video, Let's Read Tarot Together, I talked about how I find daily draws to not always be very effective. But I did talk about this practice I've been doing with the Charm Cast Tarot, um, which is, a, a, these are, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll link my, um, my walkthrough of these. But the Charm Cast Tarot is this little metal charm set. They're these little metal charms. Um, and with the set, when I backed it on Kickstarter, you could get a pendant that has a magnet in it. And so you can, um, put any tile in, like that you've drawn, you can put any tile in your pendant. So what I've been doing is a daily intention setting practice that's been really quite powerful. I will ask a specific question about what does my intention need to be for the day? Like what, what do I need to really like be aware of? What do I need to work on? How can I like have my best day today? That kind of thing. So it's very much about framing whatever card I draw into the form of an intention for the day. So no matter, even if it's a difficult card, I will form a, a, a healthy intention for myself for the day around that card. So for example, today is the Eight of Cups and Peggy and I ended up having some really great conversations about um, some things that need to be left behind uh, with regards to some stuff she's got going on. Nothing bad, nothing, whatever, it was fine. But the point is, it ended up being really relevant in that my role, my intention was to step into that role of support and help her do that. So. It's been really helpful to do this as an intention setting exercise. And what I've been doing to kind of think outside the box and try to help form an intention is I've actually been working with this along with the book um, Tarot for Self Care, which I could mention this in the book section, but I might as well mention it here because this is how I've been using it. Um, this is a really great book that I don't really hear anybody talking about. So this is by Minerva Siegel, <clears throat> which funny enough, Minerva Siegel is the author behind a lot of the pop culture decks we see coming out. So a lot of the Disney stuff, a lot of that stuff. So this is by um, a division of Simon and Schuster, this particular book. This is a great book. If you just want a general like tarot readings book, a tarot reading, tarot meanings book, I can't talk. If you just want a general tarot meanings book, this is really great. But what I love especially about it is that in every card, you have, so for every card, you have like a little thumbnail image of the card. You have an upright meaning interpretation. You have a reversed meaning that's just as long. So you have about a full paragraph for each. But you also have, and I've talked about this book before, but you also have this section here, which has self-care activities for mind, body, or spirit. And they're all suggestions for things you can do. Now, this has been really helpful because I'm using this um, as an intention setting activity. I find that referring to the self-care activities is sometimes useful to get me creatively thinking about what my intention might need to be. Like, for example, if the self-care activity is... Um, reassess your emotional, physical, and personal boundaries. Remember that communicating and enforcing them is essential. That's, that's what's recommended as a self-care activity for the spirit section of this two of wands. So I might see that and set an intention, like today I'm gonna really be aware of my boundaries and standing up for them and communicating them and like that sort of thing. So that might be how I would use this. But this has been really, really great for intention setting draws. And the regular interpretations in here I find to be really good. I still will glance through those as well, but I've just been liking forming a daily intention and then wearing that intention with me all day in the form of this pendant. Um, I will say I have a nickel allergy um, that's pretty severe actually. And, or at least I'm highly sensitive. I shouldn't say the reaction is severe, but it's very predictable. And like anything metal typically will do it to me. Um, these are tin plated iron, I believe. Um, and so is the pendant. So it is supposed to hold up pretty well, but they really aren't designed to be wet, which is a little bit of an annoyance for me personally, because I like wearing jewelry like around the clock. I don't like having to change it out. Like my earrings are in all the time. My necklace is on all the time. Um, that's just how I like to wear my jewelry. But for this, I do feel like I need to take this off when I get in the shower. Um, not a huge deal, just a mild little thing. But I will also say that I've had zero uh, skin reaction from this, uh, wearing it as much as I do. And I do sleep in the pendant. Um, I only take it out for like when I'm washing my hair and stuff, when I'm gonna get like, wet up here, you know? So, um, but I've been really enjoying that practice. It's been super nourishing. It's been really great. I do a little teeny bit of journaling about it. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just been really low key, really nice, easy to do. I keep it on a special spot on my, um, on like this like piece of furniture I have in my bedroom. So I keep it right there. I just go to that spot in the morning when I wake up, I pull, before I do anything else in the morning, I rummage around, I draw my charm, I, figure out what my intention is. I put the charm in my pendant and I go about my day and it's just been really lovely. So it feels very magical. And I wanted to mention it as one of my magical things cause that's, that's how it feels. Body and beauty stuff. So I only have two things cause I haven't really worn makeup all month long but I did paint my nails exactly twice <laughs> in January. Um, so I'm gonna share my polishes that I used cause I like doing this in these videos. You've seen one of these before. 
I don't think you've seen this one. So um, early in the month, I painted my nails with Zoya Saint. I love this polish. It is so unique and beautiful. It's kind of like holographic almost. Um, it's got a really pretty kind of periwinkle pink kind of purple shift. You can probably, you can see it there totally. Uh, it's really, really pretty. So this is called Saint by Zoya. You guys know I love Zoya polishes. They're what I have most of right now. Um, I have a handful of other things. Speaking of which, I have this. I have not painted my nails with this polish in at least two years, I'm pretty sure. Maybe maybe more recently, but I don't think so. But it has always been my favorite red polish. I should say I'm not really a red nail polish person to begin with. I don't know. I think red feels really grown up or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's not a color I gravitate to, but this is the prettiest dang red polish I've ever seen. And I love it. And it's why I've never bothered to get a different red. Um, but this is OPI's Donka Shiny Red. And I've had it. I've had this specific bottle of polish. I, I, I think I've had this for like 17 years, but I mean, it's nail polish, right? It doesn't go bad. Does it? I don't think so. It still smells like nail polish. It still performs fine. <laughs> um, maybe not that long. Maybe I've only had it for like, I think I had it before I moved to Canada though. It's possible I got it up here. If I got it up here, I would have gotten it before 2010 though. So it'd still be at least 12 years old. <laughs> Anyways, let me show you the color. Uh, it's really, really pretty. It's what I've got on my nails right now. So I'll just hold my stuff like that. There you go. So that's what the color looks like on my nails. It's got like a kind of a, it does have like a metallic look to it. Um, it's really, really shiny. As you can see, it has like a bit of, let's see if I can get it in the light. Like, I don't know if I can get it just right to get the shimmer, but there's like a little bit of like, I don't know, like, like metallic shimmer. I don't know. It's just, it's really pretty. It's a classic, pretty red. It came out in an OPI holiday collection. I'm sure if you Google it, you'll actually be able to see just how old this bottle of nail polish is. I'm pretty sure it's old <laughs> and I don't think you can get it anymore. So RIP if it ever runs out, but I really liked that. TV and movies. There are two things in, I watched, not in their entirety, which is shocking considering how much time I had at home, but I didn't really watch a lot of TV. I played a lot of Final Fantasy, did not watch a lot of TV. <laughs> so uh, in uh, like the second half of the week that I was out um, sick, I watched the first few episodes of Wheel of Time. I'm really excited about that series. I'm enjoying it. It's not it feels like a bit of a slow start, but that's also how the books felt. So I feel like it's going fine. <laughs> like I'm enjoying it, but it's not something I'm like, everybody must watch it, but I'm also only three episodes in. So we'll see. I don't know how many there are though. Are there five, six, eight? I have no idea, but I will continue to watch it. I loved reading the books when I was in high school and in my early twenties. So it, it is bringing the memories of the book series back. So they're obviously doing a good enough job for me to remember all that long ago that I read these. So that's a good sign, but I am enjoying it. And the production value is great. It's just, I'm just kind of like meh about TV right now. <laughs> the other thing we, Peggy and I finally watched Encanto. Just brace yourselves, especially if you're a big fan of the show. Cause I'm going to rant a little bit. It is a good movie. I said show, but I meant movie. It's a good movie. Like if I were to look at it objectively, it's cute. The music was really fun. Um, <clears throat> however, the family dynamics of that movie uh, can be very triggery for some people. I'll just point that out. Uh, if your family was, um, there were shades, let's just, let's just say there were shades of really toxic family dynamics that of course get wrapped up in a neat bow and everybody makes up and everything's good at the end. Um, and I can't decide if I'm happy about that or kind of annoyed about that, to be completely honest, because it's like the first part of it is like, oh, oh, ew, that, that hits close, oh, that hits close. That hits close for me, that hits close for Peggy. It was just, it was a lot, it was a lot. It was a very emotional movie to watch. Um, but then the fact that it all gets resolved so kind of quickly and easily at the end is kind of like, upsetting in a different way. <laughs> but but also like I wouldn't not want the happy ending. So like I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. I don't think I'll ever watch it again. I see why so many people love it. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. But like I'm I'm conflicted. But the music was good. Okay, food. There's only one food <laughs> that is super memorable from January and it is Cara Cara oranges, fresh Cara Cara oranges. Um, I don't think I'd ever had them before. I've had regular oranges, like navel oranges, and I've had blood oranges. I don't know if I've ever had Cara Cara oranges, but at our local Walmart, they had this brand Sun Candy <coughs> oranges, and they have all these different varieties of oranges, but the ones we happened to pick up the very first time were these Cara Cara oranges, and they're pink flesh oranges. Um, sunset pink interior, it says on the package. 
they are the juiciest, like sweetest, most delicious oranges I've ever had. And we thankfully had some when I had to start self, uh, self quarantine, self isolating, we had some and we ate them all. And, um, I sent Peggy for more because they're amazing and they're delicious. And so now we have more. I'm going to have some right after I film this video, actually, because it sounds really, really good. Let's talk about randoms and then we will talk about books and decks. Okay. So randoms first, I am still, I have to mention it because this thing has not left my side since I mentioned it in the first favorites video it came up in. And this is my Takea 24 ounce water bottle. This thing is amazing. Um, you can hear it has ice in it that I put in it a while ago. Um, it's one of those really thick kind of stainless bottles. It has this like silicone bit at the bottom that <clears throat> makes it non-slip. It's the straw top kind, which makes it really easy to drink out of. I don't spill it anywhere. I've knocked it over with the cap open and I still have it spilled, but it's really easy to just put, push it down and lift it up. It's got this really handy carry handle. I freaking love this thing. I will warn you when I found it, I found it on Amazon and this particular color happened to be on sale for like 20 bucks but these are $50 water bottles, at least in Canada. I don't know how much they cost in the States, but they're normally 50 bucks, um, which is a lot for a water bottle. H how much I use it, I will say, I, if I was able to like go back and do it again, like something happened, I lost both of mine because I bought two. <laughs> I have one at work and I have one at home. Um, I would get another one because it's that good, but it is a lot of money to spend on a water bottle. That said, I've had a lot of other water bottles that have come and gone, and I just feel like this one's going to hold up. Um, it's non-slip, it doesn't sweat, it's convenient. It just, I just, I drink more water when it stays cold and this one stays cold. So I love it. I'm mentioning it again because it's one of my favorite things ever and it, it's literally with me all the time. So I kind of had to mention it, <laughs> so there's that. Uh, oh my gosh, I have two other really fun things to share in random. Okay, so the, well, okay. So I have the, the stereotypical thing I always share in these, which is that I use Peggy's, mine is modified by the way, but I use Peggy's um, two pocket wrap bags. This is what I use to sort of cart, uh, to do all my daily readings. So some of you guys have asked where I do my three card daily spread. I typically, or when I do it, <clears throat> I typically do it when I first get to work as I'm settling in for the day. Um, I have a little bit of quiet time in the morning. So I'll have my coffee, I'll check my emails, I'll do my um, first spread of the day and jot down any notes that I have. Um, but I really like this little kit because I can put um, I can usually fit my tarot and my oracle deck side by side, sorry, I'm holding it wrong, in the front pocket here. And then in the back pocket, I'll usually have a guidebook or um, I'll have like like some printed out spreads that I wanna use or prompts that I wanna do with my practice. So I'll keep those in there. And then when I, I just open it up and I can do my reading on the flat part, which I really, really like. My, this is one of mine that Peggy made for me that doesn't have an elastic on it, but normally they have an elastic that you can wrap around the whole works. So it stays really secure. These sell out, I know I say it every month, these sell out so fast. She is working on a new batch. Um, I'm thinking she's hoping to have some up on Thursday. So this video is going up on Tuesday. So a couple days from now, maybe Friday, Thursday or Friday. Um, I think she's hoping to have a batch of a couple of these up, but they do tend to sell quickly when they do go up on the shop. They do normally have the elastic on on them. Um, but these were actually, Peggy and I came up with this design originally because we were looking for something that would hold, I was looking for something that would hold a Llewellyn guidebook and a deck. So the guide, these are actually sized to fit a Llewellyn guidebook in the back. Um, and a, you can put your deck in a bag or a couple decks or whatever in the front. Um, that's what these were created for originally because those sets always come in those big boxes and I don't like those big boxes. <laughs> Uh, so, but it quickly became something that I rotate out and I just take whatever in, but these also fit an A5 um, leather journal cover or traveler's notebook. If you've got a, a A5, they, they hold these, this is the right size because I have some of those. But anyway, I babble about these every month because I rotate different ones. And in January, this is the one I use the most. It's this really cute Woodland Creatures fabric. So adorable. Can you focus please? Thank you. It's got like some little owls and chipmunks and deer. Look at the deer. So cute. Butterflies. Anyways, I really like this one. So I use this one. So it's always a random favorite. Whatever one I've been using, I usually mention in these videos. I just babbled about it for a long time, but y'all, I haven't talked to this camera in like a, well over a week. So I'm a little bit out of sorts <laughs> and probably talking too much, which is the exact opposite of what I probably should be doing because breath, but it's fine. Okay. The next thing is also Peggy bag related. So I'm going to get it out of the way. 
This one is entirely, <clears throat> entirely because of our very own Barb, who, uh, that Barb girl who comes to our chat. She moderates my live streams and a lot of my channel membership stuff. Barb's amazing, but she realized that Peggy's standard pocket pouch, so this is one of Peggy's newer designs. This is like an envelope style bag. It doesn't have the big pull out portion to do a reading on. It's a little bit more compact. This is the size that was made. She made this to actually fit a standard like indie deck, like a tarot deck. These actually hold some pretty chunky decks, um, which is great. Really nice universal size, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, <laughs> I, I hang, I use actually mostly drawstring bags because I hang my bags on the wall, as you can see. So I use mostly drawstring bags, but Barb discovered that this standard pocket pouch that Peggy made for tarot decks fits her Kobo e-reader perfectly. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Cause I have a Kindle and I was like, I wonder if it'll fit my Kindle Paperwhite. And I found this out, I saw this post when I was not at home and I was so excited to get home and get out my Kindle. So this is my Kindle Paperwhite and look, at, it's, the most satisf it's the most satisfying thing. Look how perfectly this fits. It is like, it is literally, it is literally perfection. And then you have this part that goes around, you put the elastic on it, which means you now have a secure cover I am probably going to be snagging several more of these standard pocket pouches from Peggy so that I can change out my Kindle case because how fun is this? And I've always wanted a, um, like a cover for my Kindle, but one that wasn't so bulky. Like all the other ones I've had are really bulky and I've had the kind that clip to your Kindle. But my problem with those is when they clip to your Kindle and they've got the kind of cover that goes around, it's all that extra bulk when you're actually reading with it. And I really like just reading with the native device without a lot of gunk on it. Um, so just having something that I can just like boop, slide it in there is amazing. Uh, I have no idea what other devices it will hold because I don't have, I don't have like a, you can see the, the perfect size here. Um, I don't have any iPad type products. I do have a tablet, but I think my tablet's a little bit bigger than this. So if you have a similar device, you could always look up the size of the Kindle Paperwhite. Um, this is, does it say what model or whatever? I don't know. It's the Paperwhite. That's all I know. <laughs> um, you could look up the model dimensions and just compare, or you can just look up the dimensions of the bag on Peggy's shop and see if it will fit your device. But it is like the most protective, but slim kind of secure case I've ever had for my Kindle. And I've had a Kindle of some variety in my possession since 2012, I think, ish. So anyways, this is exciting. It's very exciting. So, and I think she's also hoping to get some more of these up this week too. So heads up, keep an eye on the shop because there'll be some of these probably dropping. Pretty sure she's got some made already. So I'm like pretty confident on that one. Um, but the two pocket bags are still in progress. I'm just babbling. Okay, other random thing, other random thing. So I got the coolest happy mail from one of our supportive tarot Facebook group members, one of the subscribers here of the channel. Her name's Carrie and she sent me the most beautiful package with the loveliest like handwritten letter and she made some gorgeous cards. She's a card maker. I was like, a card maker sent me how many cards? And you guys, wait till, you, wait till I'm gonna show them all off to you because they're so pretty. She made these just for me to be able to send to friends or family and they are, they're so beautiful. I'm like scared to use them. I'm going to use them because otherwise what a waste. But like, they are so, they are so beautiful. So here's the first one. It's, you're the unicorn of friends. Come on, focus camera. Look at how pretty that is. I don't know if I can get the light to hit. There's like all these like sparklies, like there's little bits of embossed sparkles on the card. There's glitter. The horns of the unicorns are glittery. Oh my God. So she paired this one with a pink envelope. These are so pretty. And then this one says, everything about you makes me jump for joy. Look, come on. Look at how pretty. Oh my gosh. I don't know if the light is going to help. There we go. You see the spark? I'm shaking, but like, hopefully you can see the sparkles kind of, there we go. You can see some of the shimmer. It's so pretty. And the unicorns that she used for this or drew for this or whatever. I have no idea. I don't make cards, but they're, they're literally so stinking cute. Um, and then this one, you sprinkle magic everywhere you go. This one has a really cute doily cut layer on it. Oh my God. It's so cute. Look. I need to find out, she sells them in her local shop um, in her area. I don't think she sells them online. Um, I will ask her and if she does, I will put a link down below, but these are just so, so, so beautiful. Yeah, look at this shimmer. Oh, they're so beautiful. This one was paired with a yellow envelope. 
And then the last one with a blue envelope. This one makes me think of Peggy, <laughs> of course, because um, it's so pretty. Anyway, check this out. It says, you rain. Look at the layers. Isn't that so pretty? Oh my God, it's so pretty. And this one was a, with the blue. I don't know if I already showed it, so the blue envelope. So sweet. That was, so it's handmade things are the best. They are the best. I love handmade things. They just always have the best, warmest energy and it's just, it's amazing. So with that, we are going to get into decks and then books because I have, I have a lot here. Now decks isn't as big as it should be because one of the decks um, that I really wanted to talk about, I began working with this month, but because I've been ill the last week, I just haven't really been doing a whole ton of readings for myself. I've only used it like twice, so I'm going to keep using it next week. So I'll be talking about that deck more in my February show and tell. But there are a few decks that I got a lot of use out of this month that I'm going to talk about. The first of these, which I'm so excited I've been finally getting some use out of, is the um, this is my I Believe in Unicorns OG Peggy bag with rainbow tie-dye cording. Um, this is the Crystal Unicorn Tarot by Pamela Chen. This is the Indie Go Go version, like the very first edition that ever came out. Um, I got this, obviously. Um, and it is so beautiful and charming. This was the one that had the wrong Eight of Pentacles in it. Um, is mine in order? What was I doing with it that it was in order? Oh, I used it in my, I used this deck in my troubleshooting the tarot video. Anyways, uh, it is so charming, but I used it a ton actually this month um, for, I used it in my troubleshooting the tarot video live stream, but I also have been using this deck for Unicorn Fam readings. So once a month I do free readings for members of the Magical Unicorn tier on the Unicorn Fam. And I have been really enjoying incorporating this deck into those readings. In fact, I'm pretty sure I used this deck for Unicorn Fam readings in, um, January, but also in December. I'm pretty sure I use this in December also. Hello? There we go. Hopefully it was focused before, but you can see it's, it's very much like a Rider Waite Smith clone, which is one of the reasons it hasn't gotten like a ton of use from me because I don't read with Rider Waite clones a lot, but having a Rider Waite or, or Rider Waite clone for, um, when I do live readings has been really great actually. And it is, it makes sense because when I, when I read in person, I almost will always have a Rider Waite clone with me because sometimes I just feel like if you don't know what the right deck is for a reading, I feel like a Rider Waite or a Rider Waite clone will almost always fit the bill. If it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's like a money question or it's some kind of question and you're like, I can't think of one of my decks that like I really want to use here. That's when I, that's when I will typically make sure that I have a Rider Waite Smith clone with me. So then for two weeks, I worked with these next two decks. And again, this was, these were decks that I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself, so this, I worked with these the first half of January. I could not bring myself to switch. Um, I feel like these are probably not gonna be a big surprise, but I worked with the Pacific Northwest Tarot and the Seed and Sickle uh, Oracle with the uh, Dusk, the Dusk Guidebook. Hold on, I'm gonna, I don't want my camera to stop focusing, but I used the Seed and Sickle with the Dusk Guidebook. So let's take a look at the Pacific Northwest Tarot first. So I backed this one on Kickstarter. This is how a magnetic box, this is how I want them to open, just for the record, this is a thing. Um, sometimes they're like glued right here and I don't like that. I want them to open like that all the way. Just make a note, okay, <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, um, the Pacific Northwest Tarot, this is a delightful deck. So you probably saw when I did my walkthrough that I really love the artwork on this deck. It's an animal deck, but it's it is all the animals and plants that you see in this deck and insects are all related to the Pacific Northwest, which is a geographic area that I've grown up in and also where I basically still live. I'm in Canada, but I'm, I'm just north of like the, of Washington state. So I am still very much in this sort of geography. And so these are all very relatable and more recognizable than many animal decks I've worked with. Like even like the mushrooms, oh, it's so good. So this was just wonderful to work with, but more than just the art and the fact that it's like, like the geography of it is local to me is the fact that Brendan did such an incredible job on this little guidebook. Like if you have this deck, if you get this deck, please do not neglect this little teeny gem because it is amazing. The way that this is written is as if you're reading a book, like a fictional book about each of these cards, the characters that what you see happening in the card, you're reading like an entry from a fictional book. So it's that narrative style. That's what I mean when I say narrative style. So for example, the Ace of Wands, dust whips along the ground and the wind bellows. The gust of air is an inhalation, a tireless gasping from a fire beyond the horizon. Are you... Brendan, have you wrote a book? Like, have you wrote a novel? 
If you have not written a novel, can I ask why? I'm waiting. Okay, anyway, um, it is still too far away to feel the heat, but close enough that its smoke and its smell are tangible. In the dim, it glow, in the dim, it light, I'm sure it's meant to say, in the dim, it glows like a stalled sunset. It pulls toward itself from afar, alluring, but dangerous and consuming. And that is the Ace of Wands card. I mean, it's, it's just the entire thing is written like this. Like, the only other guidebook I can think of that read exactly like this, in my experience, is the, um, ding, 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 we have a winner, Tarot of the Hidden Realm. I don't know why I could not remember that, but I could not. I could not remember that. It was, that was driving me crazy. Anyways, that is the only other deck um, whose guidebook write, is written in that very narrative style that I've personally encountered where it really just pulls you into the story of what's happening in the card. That is what Brendan has done so effectively in the Pacific Northwest Tarot. It's brilliant. It's amazing. I love it. Um, I'm really seriously contemplating if this is going to be eliminating, if because I have this, I'm going to probably need to call some of my animal decks because this one ticks off so many boxes. Like I'm really considering having a this or that and preparing this against one or two of my other animal decks to see who survives because it'll be this one, I'm just saying. Um, but even more than that, pairing this deck um, with the Seed and Sickle or, uh, Oracle deck, particularly the Dusk Guidebook, which has really just is just really speaking my speak, was such a powerful combination. Um, so I played with it a little bit in my walkthrough of the Pacific Northwest Tarot. Now, remember, this is a deck that I had decided I wasn't going to keep. I was going to declutter it. It had been sitting in my purgatory drawer for pretty much since I got it. Like, and it just, it blew me away. When I started working with it with the Dusk Guidebook and I started working with it with the Pacific Northwest Tarot, I fell in love with this deck. It's really, really well done. Um, is it upright? Yeah, so that's this whole. If this is so beautiful, and this art style goes seamlessly next to the Pacific Northwest Tarot. And in fact, they even have very similar sort of border um, border lines on them. But I just really love how this is illustrated. I adore it. Um, but mostly, I just really love the way that the guidebook is written and the way that it sort of speaks to me in that personal growth kind of way. And I'm really satisfied <laughs> with my Peggy Bag Match. Because, hello, how perfect is that? Are we still blurry? There we go. How perfect is that? So perfect. So perfect. So I worked with these for a week, and then I was like, I'm not done. So I worked with them for another week. And then I was ready to, to trade out for something else, considering how big my collection is. When I feel like I want to work with a deck more than the week that I planned, um, that's always, to me, a really good sign that I'm getting along really well, that the readings are going smoothly, that I'm not, you know, running up against hiccups, that I'm getting something good out of it. So definitely getting a lot out of my work with these two decks. And then... The third week of January, which was the last week I was really steadily doing readings, <clears throat> I worked with my Tarot of the She, which I've talked about on this channel before. I adore this deck uh, so much. I find that the guidebook is really, really powerful. I like the keywords on the cards. I just really, this is one of my favorite tower cards of all time. I love this deck. There's something, this is what fa fairy fairies feel like to me is this deck. This deck and Brian Froud's Fairy Oracle. This is what the world of fairy, 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 I can't talk. It's what the world of fairy feels like to me. Um, it does not feel like other fairy decks I've had and have worked with. It feels like this. It feels wild and it feels uh, powerful. And that's what I get from this deck. Now my copy is trimmed. I've trimmed the sides off the borders and a little bit off the tops and the bottoms. So it's narrower than it was originally. Um, and it's, in my opinion, easier to shuffle, but it does cut into this back symbol a little bit. Um, but I keep it with its guidebook, which is amazing. The guidebook in here is amazing. The minor arcana are all like little poems. And then the majors have fuller entries in them, but I get lots of good stuff out of this guidebook. I really love working with it with the guidebook. So I have it in this like really nice, pretty foresty kind of peggy bag. And I worked with that deck next to, and I like the way these paired actually. I worked with that next to the Prairie Majesty Oracle. So I finally got a chance to work with this deck and I did really enjoy myself. Um, there's a lot of depth in this particular deck, which is one of the things I love about it. This one is coming out mass market. It may already be, no, I don't think it's out yet, but it is coming out mass market. This is the indie version that the creator sent to me. Um, but this, hello. This reads really great. You have these like black and white, like sort of creatures or animals on it. You have a question on the card and a main keyword. So this one says strut along the bottom here. 
And then it also says, am I carrying myself with love? Am I carrying myself with love? And so you have these like questions which make really good journal prompts or as I was using it kind of like a tarot prompt. So I'd put this card down, I'd consider the keyword and then I'd consider the question and then I would pull a follow up tarot card. Uh, which has been really great. So if you haven't seen the Prairie Majesty Oracle, keep your eyes out. This one is based on the landscape of the prairies regions um, of North America, primarily, I believe. It was really delightful to work with. I'm still undecided on how this will ultimately fit into my practice. I did really enjoy working with it, but I think because I had just worked with Seed and Sickle and the Pacific Northwest Tarot, this one was lovely, but it didn't wow me, if that makes any sense. So we'll see. I was really wowed by it when I first got it, and I really enjoy the questions on the cards. So there's that. So we will see. And that is it for decks. So that brings us to books. I need a sip of water and to take a big breath for this next bit. So I read a lot. <laughs> I read a lot in January. First off, I reread the entire uh, Chronicles of Narnia series. So this is a series of seven books, the Chronicles of Narnia. The, the first book that most of us have heard of and the first book that was actually written was The, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, um, which is a really great story. Um, but there was a full set of seven, including the prequel to that story, The Magician's Nephew. This particular volume of the book, I will link it down below because this is fantastic. There is a soft cover and a hard cover version of this. This is all seven books in one volume, and this was wonderful to read. There are some um, illustrations, some of the original illustrations here and there throughout the stories. I really, this is very much a book that is super meaningful to me or a set of books that is super meaningful to me and to my growing up. It was really wonderful to reread these. I will probably continue to reread these every once in a while because I just, I love them so much. And I love this gorgeous picture of Aslan on the front cover um, of the dust jacket. This is so great. But yeah, the entirety of the series is The Magician's Nephew, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Horse and His Boy, Prince Caspian, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, The Silver Chair, and The Last Battle. And all seven books are in this book. So I count that as seven books read, which is pretty pretty great. So I did that in January. Um, along the same line, I've also started working with a little bit, and I don't have the dust jacket here because I put it away, but um, I think I might've mentioned this last month. This is the book, um, A Year with Aslan, and it is basically a, a, a dated book. So you have an entry for every day of the year. Hopefully that's focused. <laughs> Gotta get my face out of there. And then in each entry, you have an excerpt from one of the stories and then some questions for contemplation. So. Um, I did a pretty thorough check of this book because I do understand that the um, Chronicles of Narnia do have some religious overtones if you're looking for them. I would like to, now that I've reread them as an adult um, multiple times over, I will say there was a period of time when that would have been difficult for me. That is not the case anymore. I feel like I can frame those themes and those messages into any spiritual way of looking at the world and I really like that. I really like Aslan as a sort of benevolent de deified kind of character in the books. Um, so a year with Aslan, this has been really enjoyable. I'm only playing with this a little bit. I did have the intention originally that I was going to journal every day um, from this book and that has fallen off pretty quickly because it turns out that the daily journaling I need to do, this was kind of keeping me from doing, if that makes any sense. I need to do a little bit more deeper, more personal stuff. These are lovely questions for contemplation. I'm reviewing this occasionally, but doing it as a daily practice turned out to not quite be what I was needing, but it is really lovely. And if you are a fan of the Narnia world, of the Narnia books, of Aslan, then you'd probably really enjoy this. But I'm just playing with it. I'm dipping it in and out throughout the year. So this will probably not get mentioned every month, but I am going to be working with it on and off throughout 2022. I also read all three of the books one to three of Serena Valentino's Disney Villains series. Now I bought this box set of three books in 2021, I think near the beginning of the year. Uh, and these were going to be like a, like a dessert, like a reward for getting, knocking off a bunch of other stuff off of my shelf for to be read. Um, and I finally cleared enough room on my shelf where I was like, okay, I can finally read these. And I have to admit, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> Like, they're so beautiful, these books. So let me show you kind of how they're set up. So each one is basically a fictional origin story of a different Disney villain. So the first book is called Fairest of All. And I mean, the production value on these books is gorgeous. So you have kind of this, and these are licensed through Disney. So you have the um, villain, as we know her, on the front dust jacket. But beneath that, you have another version of that same villain. So like they're multiple, multiple, what do you call it? Multiple, uh personas? 
what am, what am I trying to say? They're different, they're different visages. They're, I have no idea what word I'm looking for, but you know how the different villains have multiple looks because of the way that the movies happen? Um, that's how they've done these books, which is super fun. I will say um, the pages are actually, the print is decently large and it's a fairly small book. So like, like in height, like here's the Chronicles of Narnia as a hardback. And here's Fairest of All. So you can see these are really quick reads. Um, so this book, the first in the series, and I think they all have a fairly similar page count. This has got 245, 250 pages, but because it's short and there's a lot of spacing around each block of text, you can see there's quite wide margins. Um, it's actually not very long at all. So these were really quick to read. It was fun. I don't, I won't reread them. So I will be rehoming my boxed set, but they were fun to read. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't think, maybe I'm just not a Disney villain person. I don't know. But so that was fairest of all. It was, it was fun. It was a fun read. It was just not like, again, it didn't wow me. I had the same experience with The Beast Within. Um, there, it is kind of fun because there are some characters that run through all the books that kind of have a hand in some of the, the different villains experiences. So this is The Beast and there's The Prince. So you get that, which is cool. Um, again, this kind of pretty gloss, spot gloss, and these are um, velvet touch soft touch covers. It's a really nice, like I said, really nice production value. And then the third book in the series is Poor Unfortunate Soul, which is Ursula. And there's Ursula when she transforms into the human. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. This one was kind of extra fun because there is a portion in the book where it, the full song from the Disney movie is actually written into the text. Like, so you can actually, it's almost like you're watching this is the one where I felt like I was watching bits and pieces of the movie, of the Disney movie, Little Mermaid, and putting it into context with what Ursula was up to kind of before then, before that scene, kind of during and around those scenes and after those scenes. So kind of like you got to see behind the curtain in a way. So that was, that was fun. This was, if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be this one just for that reason. Um, but I, I think because it's telling the villain stories and the villains don't typically have like happy endings, I don't know. I just was kind of like, except for the beast. The beast, obviously he, he works, he turns out okay. But I don't even know that I'd classify the beast as the villain in Beauty and the Beast. So that one felt like it strayed a little bit. But, but Fairest of All and Poor Unfortunate Souls, which was um, the, uh, Oh, it doesn't on the box too. So you have their villain characters and then their other, their true selves or whatever. I don't know how you want to look at that. It's not quite the way it is. But anyway, these were fun. Um, there is a bunch more books in this series that I thought I was going to pick up. Thank goodness I did not pick them up in advance because while these were fun, I don't feel like I want to continue the series. So, but if you're really into Disney, Disney villains and Disney villain backstories and you want like a licensed version because this is an officially Disney licensed product, um, if you are the type that you're really into that kind of stuff, you might really find these to be a fun read, but I was kind of underwhelmed. But here's the exciting news. The other books that I was going to reward myself with are the second and third books in the series, Bridget Kemmerer's uh, A Curse So Dark and Lonely. So I raved about this book in 2021 when I first read it and I loved it. I loved it so much. And there are two books that follow. I have them both on my shelf. I've been planning to read them for a long, long time but it's taken me so long to get to them that I wanted to reread this first. So I've just finished rereading A Curse So Dark and Lonely. It is just as good as I remember. It was so good. I will definitely read these again and again and again and again. I love the characters. I love the development. Um, there's something really special about this. If you like fairy tale retellings, this is a bit Beauty and the Beast fairy tale retelling. Um, the take on it in this book is just, it's incredible. It's so good. And every time, last time I read it, I read it in a few days. Same thing this time. I just can't put it down. I don't know what it is. It's it's just incredible. It's so good. And you know that when it, you can reread it and it reads like that, that's especially exciting. Um, but this is so good. And I've already started the second book. So I will probably have read the second and the third book by the end of February. I guess we'll see, but that's what I'm hoping. So, but this was so good. So yeah, love it. And the last book thing I have to share, and I, I haven't read this and I, I doubt I'm going to read this cover to cover, but I'm very excited about it. And that is Tashin's Library of Esoterica, the witchcraft book. So I pre-ordered this. Now Tashin has two other books in the Library of Esoterica series so far. And they're, these are really beautiful, gorgeous, like hardbound, just beautiful books. Um, I have the other two where there's one on tarot and there's one on astrology. And I found out about them both through Dustin. So I ended up with those. They're really beautiful. These are like coffee table kind of books in the sense that like they're very image heavy. Um, and this one's all about witchcraft. And they really like, this is the section on Mabin I opened too. They really, you can tell, put an effort into being 
respectful, being accurate, like here's a section on, on the element of air, um, and really coming at the conversation of, or the, the topic of witchcraft with a lot of respect. And that's what I found about the other ones, but they're just, they're visually stunning books to look at. And they're the kind of thing like an encyclopedia where you might turn, I think I said encyclopedia. <laughs> like an encyclopedia where you might turn to a particular section um, and just read that section. Like here's a section on sacred rocks. Um, but these are very like grown up um, esoteric books. And I like, this is like, I feel like these three books on my shelf and they've got some pop culture references as you can see too. Um, these three books on my shelf are very, um, they're like a little slice of Dustin on my shelf in a way, because this, this kind of book is very much right up Dustin's alley, obviously. But um, and when I'm talking about Dustin, by the way, I'm talking about modern metaphysics. Hey, if you're not subscribed to him on YouTube, you should be. Also, if you're not subscribed to Three Fat Readers, which is the collaboration between myself, Dustin at Modern Metaphysics, hey, and Danny of Danny Mystic, make sure you're subscribed. There is always a link to Three Fat Readers in the description below, so you can always find us there. We do streams once a month. In February, we're gonna do two, because we didn't get to do a January one, but anyway, um, that's what I'm talking about when I talk about Dustin in my in my videos. But anyway, um, yeah, like I feel like this is a mandrake. Yeah, this is a mandrake. It's just cool. It's just a really cool book. So yeah, this is the kind of thing that I will definitely dip in and out of just for fun. Um, but it's full of so many like wonderful images and all the images of course have a description so you know what you're looking at. But it's really, it's really an incredible, an incredible book. And I'm so glad that I pre-ordered it um, and that it gets to sit next to the tarot and the astrology one. I don't know if they're doing any more in this series. Uh, I'm super curious. If you know, let me know down below because I'd like to keep an eye on the other books in the series because like they could do an entire one on other esoteric subjects, but I feel like they've hit the top three, witchcraft, astrology, and tarot. And in my mind, I'm like, well, what else is there? But I'm sure there's more. So I'd be curious to know if any more are coming from Tashin in the Library of Esoterica series. So if you know, let me know because I'd love to have them. But that, my friends, wraps up my show and tell for the month of January. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for putting up with my throat clearing and my moments of catching my breath and that sort of thing. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna to try to keep editing of this video down to a minimum because I'm still pretty tired. So if it comes out a little rough, that's why. But thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. It means, really, truly means so much when you spend your time here on this channel. I know that I make long videos and I don't, um, take it for granted that you spend so much time here. It really, it means, it means a lot. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be fun to do if there weren't you guys here watching on the other end. So thank you so much. I've got some really fun things coming up this month in February. If you missed it on my community tab, I put a little teaser about what's coming out in February, assuming everything goes according to plan. I'm really excited about it. Um, and there's more to come. So keep an eye out on this space. Uh, there might be a couple of impromptu live streams also happening this month. So make sure that you have, if you haven't already subscribe uh, and hit the little bell and make sure you switch it to all, not all notifications if you wanna get the emails about like when I go live or like other things coming out and uh, make sure you've enabled notifications on your mobile device if you want the push notifications when I'm live if you watch primarily on mobile. Okay, enough of all of that. Thank you so, so much for watching. Again, please be sure and click the like button if you enjoyed this video or you found value in it. And uh, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye, guys.